in the business world. Everyone is paid in two coins, cash and experience. Take the experience first. The cash will come later. Leadership is practiced not so much in words as in attitude and in actions. Every company has two organizational structures. The formal one is written on the charts. The other is the everyday relationship of the men and women in the organization. It is an immutable law in business that words are words. Explanations are explanations. Promises are promises, but only performance is reality. The five essential entrepreneurial skills for success. Concentration, discrimination, organization, innovation, and communication. Leadership cannot really be taught. It can only be learned. Facts from paper are not the same as facts from people. The reliability of the people giving you the facts is as important as the facts themselves. Management must manage. A true leader has to have a genuine open-door policy so that his people are not afraid to approach him for any reason. It is the heart that makes a man rich. He is rich according to what he is, not according to what he has. We are always on the anvil. By trials, God is shaping us for higher things. The unthankful heart discovers no mercies, but let the thankful heart sweep through the day, and as the magnet finds the iron, so it will find, in every hour, some heavenly blessings. Books are not made for furniture, but there is nothing else that so beautifully furnishes a house. We sleep, but the loom of life never stops, and the pattern which was weaving when the sun went down is weaving when it comes up in the morning. The philosophy of one century is the common sense of the next. The difference between perseverance and obstinacy is that one comes from a strong will and the other from a strong won't. He is rich or poor according to what he is, not according to what he has. Never forget what a person says to you when they are angry. Management manages by making decisions and by seeing that those decisions are implemented. Uncertainty will always be part of the taking charge process. Managers in all too many American companies do not achieve the desired results because nobody makes them do it. Performance stands out like a ton of diamonds. Non-performance can always be explained away. You can't run a business or anything else on a theory. Example is leadership. Sometimes our light goes out, but is blown into flame by another human being. Each of us owes deepest thanks to those who have rekindled this light. The only ones among you who will be really happy are those who will have sought and found how to serve. The tragedy of life is what dies inside a man while he lives. My life is my argument. An optimist is a person who sees a green light everywhere while a pessimist sees only the red stoplight. The truly wise person is colorblind. Constant kindness can accomplish much. As the sun makes ice melt, kindness causes misunderstanding, mistrust, and hostility to evaporate. Man has lost the capacity to foresee and to forestall. He will end by destroying the earth. Ethics is nothing else than reverence for life. A man is ethical only when life, as such, is sacred to him, that of plants and animals is that of his fellow men, and when he devotes himself helpfully to all life that is in need of help. Mew. Never say there is nothing beautiful in the world anymore. There is always something to make you wonder in the shape of a tree, the trembling of a leaf. Man can hardly even recognize the devils of his own creation until he extends his circle of compassion to include all living things. Man will not himself find peace. The true worth of a man is not to be found in man himself, but in the colors and textures that come alive in others. Think occasionally of the suffering of which you spare yourself the sight. Life becomes harder for us when we live for others but it also becomes richer and happier. The willow which bends to the tempest often escapes better than the oak which resists it. 
And so in great calamities, it sometimes happens that light and frivolous spirits recover their elasticity and presence of mind sooner than those of a loftier character. I have always held firmly to the thought that each one of us can do a little to bring some portion of misery to an end. Do something for somebody every day for which you do not get paid. Man must cease attributing his problems to his environment and learn again to exercise his will, his personal responsibility in the realm of faith and morals. Compassion, in which all ethics must take root, can only attain its full breadth and depth if it embraces all living creatures and does not limit itself to mankind. A man is truly ethical only when he obeys the compulsion to help all life which he is able to assist, and shrinks from injuring anything that lives. Anyone who proposes to do good must not expect people to roll stones out of his way, but must accept his lot calmly, even if they roll a few stones upon it. By having a reverence for life, we enter into a spiritual relation with the world by practicing reverence for life. We become good, deep, and alive. A man can do only what he can do, but if he does that each day he can sleep at night and do it again the next day. A great secret of success is to go through life as a man who never gets used up. The African is my brother but he is my younger brother by several centuries. Truth has no special time of its own. Its hour is now, always. A man does not have to be an angel in order to be saint. One thing I know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who will have sought and found how to serve. Just as the wave cannot exist for itself, but is ever a part of the heaving surface of the ocean, so must I never live my life for itself, but always in the experience which is going on around me. Seek always to do some good, somewhere. Every man has to seek in his own way to realize his true worth. You must give some time to your fellow man. For remember, you don't live in a world all your own. Your brothers are here too. Everything deep is also simple and can be reproduced simply as long as its reference to the whole truth is maintained. But what matters is not what is witty, but what is true. Day by day we should weigh what we have granted to the spirit of the world against what we have denied to the spirit of Jesus, in thought and especially in deed. Wherever a man turns, he can find someone who needs him. The great secret of success is to go through life as a man who never gets used up. Whoever is spared personal pain must feel himself called to help in diminishing the pain of others. We must all carry our share of the misery which lies upon the world. Ethics is the activity of man directed to secure the inner perfection of his own personality. By respect for life, we become religious in a way that is elementary, profound and alive. If a man loses his reverence for any part of life, he will lose his reverence for all of life. Man is a clever animal who behaves like an imbecile. Reverence for life is the highest court of appeal. Reverence for life affords me my fundamental principle of morality. The highest proof of the spirit is love. Love the eternal thing which can already on earth possess as it really is. I can do no other than be reverent before everything that is called life. I can do no other than to have compassion for all that is called life. That is the beginning and the foundation of all ethics. Impart as much as you can of your spiritual being to those who are on the road with you, and accept as something precious what comes back to you from them. Let me give you a definition of ethics. It is good to maintain and further life it is bad to damage and destroy life. One truth stands firm. All that happens in world history rests on something spiritual. If the spiritual is strong, it creates world history. If it is weak, it suffers world history. As soon as man does not take his existence for granted, but beholds it as something unfathomably mysterious, thought begins. 